So she's a nurse practitioner and the owner of Live Well Health Clinic. Having a profound interest in functional and integrative medicine, Kim has pursued further education with A4M and completed her certification with the American Board of Anti-Aging for Health Professionals. Her education journey didn't end there. She also has completed the FAAMFM <laughs> Fellowship in Anti-Aging Metabolic and Functional Medicine. Kim strongly feels functional and integrative medicine reflect the philosophy of care she strives to provide with her patients daily, seeing each patient as unique individuals requiring personalized medical care. Kim is passionate about health and wellness and continues to avidly expand her knowledge in integrative medicine. Under Kim's leadership, Live Well Health Clinic provides holistic care for patients in a compassionate and honest way that's unique to each individual. Well, I can't say enough about Kim because I work with Kim as well. I refer a lot of cases. Uh, this is the whole holistic integrative approach because, you know, as a naturopathic doctor, I cannot prescribe LDN. It's really excellent working with Kim. She's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to LDN. She's the one you actually introduced me to LDN because you were talking about it with patients and then we get curious and that's kind of the ripple effect of how it starts. Um, so thanks for coming on today. We appreciate having you. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I know in terms of uh, digestive health, I've referred a lot of my complex SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and severe dysbiosis uh, cases to you, and you have prescribed LDN for them. So among other things, can you touch on why it is that you bring LDN into those cases? Um, I think when it gets a little bit more complex, um, usually people have tried various uh, things on their own, so herbs or diet or things like that. And I think that it's LDN isn't the only answer, it's an adjunct therapy to all the other things that are going on to help to boost the immune system so that we can get more of an effect. So for example, um, when you refer someone who does have complex SIBO or dysbiosis symptoms, uh, and a lot of people have taken tests to show that these things are happening with them, then I'll usually order an antibiotic uh, for two weeks, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on the situation. Everybody's really different, right? We are not cookie cutters. We are not all the same. And then depending on the length of time that they've been struggling, we might need to order low dose naltrexone. A lot of people who've been struggling, um, they've had symptoms for quite some time. When you look at their history, they can say, you know, they've had symptoms for 20, 25, 30 years even, and they can go back to a point in time where maybe they went through some significant stress or trauma, maybe they had a significant infection and needed to be on antibiotics for prolonged periods of time. Um, maybe their diet was really off for whatever reason, uh, finances, uh, living situations, there's lots of reasons. Um, and they just need some extra help. So the antibiotic is good for two to three weeks, sometimes a little longer, but then the low dose naltrexone combined with um, the herbal remedies that you've recommended as a naturopath just help to take that a little bit longer. So it's not just the, that little period of time that I've ordered the antibiotics for. We're extending that period of time of healing for a little bit longer for three to six months so that we can really help the gut to heal because it's really important for that, right? The, there's a lot of, as everybody else before me has already discussed, there's a lot of things that go on when we, do, when we have poor gut health. It adversely affects our, our uh, mood and our ability to lose weight, uh, skin, uh, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And do you get pushback from other prescribers or family doctors when you're introducing LDN into someone's protocol it's for gut health? Uh, to be honest, no. I mean, I, I think the patients probably experience it more than I do, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, I have had so many patients that have done really well on it and I go really low and slow to reduce the number of side effects um, that a patient might experience while they're using low-dose naltrexone. Um, but it's been really helpful for so many people. So to be honest, I haven't personally, I've heard a few patients that have experienced it, um, but they've persisted. Um, I think a lot of patients are learning to advocate for themselves in today's healthcare. And so, um, so they do it, they do it anyway, and it helps them to feel better. So I think that that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. And, and I think the goal of these 
conversations are so that hopefully patients have resources to provide to their practitioners so that they can start to understand more and more people can kind of get on board with this. Now, in terms of gut health, because you do prescribe LDN, what are the, you know, I know we we're talking about the overgrowth. Are there other gut conditions that you're using LDN for? Um, so yes, actually I have patients who have gastritis. I have young children that are, have it with, that have issues with absorption for various reasons. Some, some young children actually don't even have an actual diagnosis. Um, and they're a bit of a puzzle, but low dose naltrexone has helped them so that they're actually able to start growing and to meet their growth requirements. So that's good things with um, irritable bowel syndrome. I was going to say IBS, but I don't know if everybody knows what IBS is. So I have to be careful about using short form. Sorry. So um, irritable bowel syndrome, for sure. Um, Crohn's disease. There's so many of them. And again, every person is really different. Like some people, obviously, when you have Crohn's, celiac, um, irritable bowel, those can be those are lifelong things that people struggle with. So sometimes those people are on those things every day um, and gastritis as well. Um, some people like SIBO or dysbiosis. They're not on it every day forever. They're on it for periods of time, again, depending on how long they've had their symptoms for and how long they've struggled. So it could be three to six months. Every Again, everybody's really individual, right? So Okay. So that's, that's interesting. This is the first perspective we've heard on treating a bit more of a range of gut conditions with LDN because Dr. Junik and I were talking about it more for chronic pain, where if there is a dose reduction, or if someone comes off of it, then their symptoms can come back. So with gut, you know, you provide them this bridge to help support. And then eventually, so you are seeing some patients able to come off and then they have resolution of the gut issues. Yes. Okay. Now, keep in mind, though, with things like SIBO and dysbiosis, um, those things can come back depending on how we treat our bodies, right? So kind of like uh, getting pneumonia. You get pneumonia, we treat it with an antibiotic. It doesn't mean because we treated it and now it's all gone. It'll never come back again. You know, sadly, things kind of happen and you, you can be at risk for getting it back again, right? But um, depending on what your overall health is. Um, but if you follow the guidelines, um, and usually people who do a lot of bowel testing also do food sensitivity testing. So if you follow the recommendations, then your chances of avoiding it uh, and avoiding re reoccurrence is, is good. Um, but, you know, sometimes things happen. You know, we're not always in control. So you can be sick, uh, requiring more antibiotics again for an unknown period of time things happen and then you might need to be treated again, but, but it's not, but SIBO and dysbiosis are not like an everyday thing ongoing forever. There is yeah. other conditions that need that. For sure. And I mean, I think that's one of the challenges with the complex gut conditions is, you know, how strict and regimented we are. And then when it's over with people are like, Oh, thank God it's done. Yeah. It's then, true. I hear that all the time, actually. Yeah. The reintroduction and re kind of integrating it back into your life can often be the most challenging part. And so that's why having a therapeutic, at least to kind of help control symptoms, I think, so people can figure that out without having to start all over again can be really, really beneficial. Yeah. And I think once people have gone through it once, they've spoken with a naturopath, you know, they kind of have an idea of what they need to do to help themselves. Some people are able to start things immediately when they start feeling symptoms so that maybe they don't even need low dose naltrexone or antibiotics to help them with SIBO and dysbiosis because they recognize that, you know, there's a little bit of a blip and for whatever reason, uh, they're starting to recognize the symptoms a lot earlier so they can start their treatment or speak to a naturopath a whole lot sooner, which is good. I'm not saying that I need to be the one that they need to see every time. Mm. I think that it's good for people to be proactive and I so, so support the naturopaths. It's really excellent. I think working with them and I learn a lot. So it's great. Yeah. And so do you think is digestive health? I know you did the A4M fellowship and all that. It, is digestive health one of the specialties that you do or do you do a lot more kind of hormone support as well? Um, do you know what? I do both. And it's funny because in when you're taking the courses through A4M, whether it's uh, cardiology, neurology, um, hormone health, like gut health is through the whole thing. What we are what, essentially what we eat. 70% of the receptors go from the gut to the brain and much fewer go from the brain 
to the gut. So when they say we are what we eat, they really do mean we are what we eat, right? So when we eat junk, that's how our body is going to respond, right? With just, it's not going to be optimal. It's not going to be the best that we can be. I'm not saying you could never have chocolate cake and glass of wine. I'm not saying that's never going to happen. But when we inundate our bodies with so much food that it's not really healthy for us. It, we don't get the best performance. It's kind of like if you have a Ferrari, you would never put regular gas in a Ferrari, but we, yet we put junk in our bodies and expect Ferrari performance. Like you can't do that. You have to treat your body well all of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It is hard because we're used to, especially during COVID, we're really, it's difficult times because you know, if we're afraid of going to the grocery store, then we don't want to buy fresh veggies all the time because they go bad so fast. And that means we'd have to go grocery shopping again. So it's convenient to buy processed foods. You know, I get it. It's difficult. These are difficult times for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I like the whole thing. It's kind of choose your hard right now. Everything's hard. So you choose what it is that's important. That's going to be a challenge, but you make that a priority in your life. Um, yeah. So, and, and so what are, how do you prep, how do you counsel? Cause I know a lot of, we're getting a lot of um, more specific questions around LDL, LDN and how it works. So how do you kind of open up that conversation with people about, I'm going to prescribe you something um, you might've not heard about it. Cause everybody's heard of antibiotics. Everybody's heard of, but it is one of those things that people are not familiar with. So I think it'd be interesting to hear your spiel on it that you would tell patients before you give it to them. Okay. Well, usually, so when I'm with a patient, I've read everything that I've been given by the naturopaths that I've referred, and um, I listen to the patient's story to hear what it is that they have to say in their struggle, how long they've struggled, what they've tried, what they haven't tried, what worked, what didn't work, and we go through the whole thing. Um, again, sometimes, some people look for the quick fix, but, you know, I tell them, you know, going on an antibiotic will help for the first few weeks, but you know, sometimes we need some additional healing and support for the next few months past this point. And so I ask them, you know, have you ever heard of something called low dose naltrexone? And I tell people, I'm not asking you to commit now and everybody go goes on Google nowadays. So I always tell them before you commit to anything, I want you to talk to Adam, the, our pharmacist, Adam and Grace, they're awesome. You can talk to them, talk to the, the naturopath and see what they think and see how it's going to blend in with what you're doing. And I want you to go online and look it up and see what you think. And I want you to look up if I, you know, I think that you might have this diagnosis. So I want you to go online and look it up, you know, does this match what it is that you're feeling and what you're expressing to me? And is this something that we can work with? And, and um, after you're done speaking with them, if you want me to start using Lotus and Altrexone, no problem. Cause I want people to be informed. I don't want them to go, what is this new thing that she's trying to get me to take? I don't know what this is. And is it really going to work? So I encourage people to speak to people, to other people, so that they get a better idea of what it is that I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Now, when I when we talk about dosing, um, oftentimes I find prescribers go kind of fast with the prescribing. So they start at 1.5 and they go up by 1.5 um, every two weeks until you get to 4.5. But I actually start lower. I've spoken to many different pharmacists about this to get an idea of what we can do to avoid any kind of side effects. Not that I actually have a lot of patients who have side effects, but I also go a lot lower and slower to avoid those. Um, so I started 0 0.5 and I go 0 0.5 and I increase by 0 0.5 every two weeks until I get to 4.5. Unless of course you start having side effects. Like if you start having, if you were great at three, but going to 3.5 gave you side effects, you just go back to three. 4.5 is a goal, but not the goal. Like again, we're not cookie cutters everybody's not the same. So we're not all going to get to the same endpoint, but we try to get to where we can. And sometimes we need to hang out at a certain dose for a period of time. Again, everybody's different before we try adjusting the dose again. And just by going at a pace that works best for you, the patient, that actually helps us to work with your body as your body adjusts and starts to heal. It's not our agenda. It, we're trying to create a plan of care that works best for people. We don't, we're trying to make them feel better, not worse. So yeah. that's probably really refreshing and empowering for people to hear. Cause they're like, you know, they don't, maybe it takes them four weeks to get up to the next dose. For sure. There are some people that take a lot longer. There's some people that go once a month, they increase by 0 0.5. 
some people never get past 1.5 or 2 and that's okay that's okay that's what and they feel good they feel better they feel their symptoms are managed and some people get to 4.5 very quickly and they again still feel okay we're trying to avoid side effects. So common side effects can be uh, increased anxiety or difficulty sleeping or vivid dreams. So if we have those things, so usually I tell people you take it about, you know, an hour or so before bed, but if you're having side effects, then we're gonna go two hours before bed and try that out for a week or two. And if you're still having side effects of difficulty sleeping and anxiety, we're gonna go three hours and we just keep moving it a little bit forward until you don't have side effects or reducing the dose a little bit. So I found that that has been really helpful for people. Okay, that's great. That answers a question. We had a lot of questions around timing and about like if oh, someone okay. could just take it and go right to sleep and you know if they were having sleep effects. So, okay, so you usually say, now will that affect, because Adam was alluding that um, the, you know, the sleeping difficulties often go away when someone's body is used to it, but you will back it off obviously closer to bedtime than if they're still struggling with those symptoms. Yeah, like when people start new medications, sometimes they'll have a few things. So I'd like them to try it out for at least two weeks or so to see if like it works itself out. Um, obviously, if it's really persistent or getting worse, then let, you know, move it back an hour just so, so that we can see how it goes. I mean, it works best when we take it before bed. But again, everybody's really different. So if you're not tolerating it really well, then you just, we just go back a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can meet your body's needs. For sure. And, and what do you, what do you use it the most, like what's the most common condition? And I mean, there might be several that you, oh. <laughs> describe it. I know it's a hard question on the spot that you describe it for in your practice. Um, you know, I would think that the most common things would be so gut issues for sure. So I wouldn't put it to any one gut issue because there's a few that I, that I use it a lot for, and, but also hypothyroid. I, those are probably the two most common things. Um, I do use it for conditions like MS um, and Graves disease and alopecia. I've used it for. So you, do use it for you are using it for Graves. That was another question that we had. And I, I don't have experience with that. And Dr. Yusuf didn't. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So, so again, a lotus is not used all by itself, whether it's a Hashimoto's or Graves. I, it's not that we're going to abandon everything else, but hopefully by using lotus naltrexone, we're going to de decrease the need for the amount of medication you're going to need. So instead of using a full dose of whatever, you know, whether it's tapazole, obviously for Graves, but whether maybe we can help to reduce the dose and by reducing the dose, maybe we can also reduce the symptoms that you're experiencing from the Graves disease. So it's not, low dose naltrexone is not a cure-all. We're not, we're not curing Hashimoto's. We're not curing Graves disease. We're not curing MS. That's not the point, but it's to help to reduce uh, symptoms that you might experience from these things and help to reduce the number of medications that you might need to take so that you feel better. We're optimizing your health as much as possible. Yes. And that is the recurring thing that we kind of keep hashing on a little bit is that we don't want to have this discussion just to go on and on about low dose naltrexone. And for those who are listening are probably noticing that we're talking about a whole bunch of other stuff yes. and that's because yes. we have to, because we know at the end of the day, you know, maybe the people that aren't responding as well to LDN because we're not touching on other areas. So if, yes. in, you know, we, we absolutely have to, and, and if you don't talk about diet, uh, with someone, or if you don't talk about sleep and that sort of thing, I'm sure the effects, it would be really interesting to see how someone would actually, you know, the effects of LDN, if you can modulate them from getting someone to sleep really well and cleaning up their diet, you know, potentially, you know, improving how they actually respond to that medication. Well, and I find um, sometimes when I have um, patients come to me, they think that all, all of the, all they need is only low dose naltrexone. Um, but that's not actually entirely true. There's, you know, we, there's so many parts of us that we need to help to look after, right? So we need adequate sleep, reduce stress, adequate diet, proper supplementation, uh, exercise. If we address those five things, that certainly does help a lot uh, to help us on our journey to wellness. It's not just any one thing, because obviously if we just do one thing, but we ignore exercise or we don't sleep, that you can't lose weight. If you're not sleeping properly, you can't lose weight if you're overly stressed because of cortisol, right? So it, our body is complex and it's all integrated. And so low-dose naltrexone helps, 
but it's not the be all and end all of everything. Like it, it's in conjunction with, it's an adjunct therapy with. Right. And so working with the naturopaths is really great because they're addressing all of those other things besides what I'm just doing. So they're also addressing, you know, proper supplementation, you know, especially now that we're heading into winter. I know it's a really bad word and we don't want to say the S word, but it's coming our way and we have less sun. So vitamin D is super important because vitamin D is essential for our healthy immune system, right? So we could do a whole lecture series on vitamin D. <laughs> There's so much to it. It's a pre-hormone. It's not even a vitamin. It's a pre-hormone. So it's really essential for healthy hormones and skin, hair, bones, like, and low vitamin D mimics anxiety, depression, and even symptoms of schizophrenia. Like you need vitamin D. So it's, so lotus naltrexone isn't just because you take lotus naltrexone doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything else is really good. The naturopaths are going to help to address all of those other things that you need to do to help to optimize your health so that we're doing the absolute best. We, we as professionals, whether it's a nurse practitioner or the pharmacist or the naturopath, we don't do our patient service if we don't address all the areas. Like if, we're, if you're trying to lose weight and we just put you on a diet, but we don't address exercise, then we're not looking at you as a person. So it's everything together, right? It's a holistic approach. I agree. I mean, I couldn't agree more. And I also think putting the message out there is shifting us away from the notion and the concept that there is one thing that will solve all of our issues. And we're constantly looking for that magic pill. And it's incredible to find stuff that actually works because there are people who are suffering so much we legitimately cannot even give them diet exercise. We cannot do anything because they're so uh, chronic pain, inflammation, fogginess, like there's just no capacity. And that is, you know, where LDN is, is just so incredibly important. But on the other realm of, you know, where symptoms are not at that level, we cannot give LDN without looking at vitamin D, right? Like you, how can we build on immune modulation if we're not looking at our own endogenous regulators? Well, and it, and, and it not even just vitamin D, but even just all the inflammatory processes that occur. Like, are we looking at all the things that cause inflammation and are we trying to do the best that we can to, to, to modify that? Like, you know, poor sleep increase, decreases our immune system. Stress decreases our immune system. Poor diet, like there's so many things. So again, if we just look at, oh, I lost you. Oh, did you get there it? We go. It's back. It's back. Okay. Oh, good. So if you just look at one thing to boost the immune system, but we don't address everything, diet, exercise, sleep, reduce stress, proper vitamins, then we're not doing a complete job. So lotus naltrexone is an adjunct therapy to help. It is not a cure-all for everything. And it certainly does help to reduce the amount of medications that patients have to take. Um, for people who have MS, it helps to decrease the number of flares or the intensity of the flares that they get. It, it's not, it doesn't cure that, but it helps so that they have better quality of living. Mm -hmm. And do you, are you finding that there is an, is, are you seeing an increased demand right now for LDN? Like, do you oh, find, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, the a lot of people definitely... that are reaching out for it and, and they've gone to their family practitioner or their specialist and they brought them, you know, research papers. Um, they brought them the book even, um, they've done all kinds of things because they're at begging for people to help them. So, and it's hard because mainstream medicine, that's not what we're doing really. There's a few that are starting to, which is nice, but mainstream, there's not so much. So it's hard for patients. So they're really looking for something to help. And so how long have you been working with LDN? Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't even, I can't remember now. It's been so many years. I can't even remember. And it kind of happened slowly. Like I just had a patient who said, could you please just read this and, and let me know what you think? So I started reading it and then I wanted more information. So then um, I, I got the book and, and then even in taking the courses, it talks about it all through the courses. So it just really reinforced the use. And as I got more and more familiar with it and how to use it, um, initially when I started, I did do the 1.5 and increase it by 1.5 and I didn't like it at all. Like I, the feedback from patients wasn't good. And I thought this just doesn't, doesn't sit well. So I, I interviewed actually different pharmacists to say, what, like, help me, like, what is going to help patients? Cause this, you know, all the research says it has to be 4.5, but it, 
women actually tend to do better on three men at 4.5, just because women tend to be smaller and the metabolism is a little bit different. But again, every, that doesn't mean women don't get to 4.5. Every person is different. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that is, you know, this is such great information, super useful. Thank you so much for being on. Is there anything else you want to add that I didn't ask that we didn't touch on? Um, I can't think of anything else. Did you have any other questions at all? No, I think that's a great place to end. We got our message across, the dosing across. Um, you know, it's so great working with you. I feel so privileged <laughs> that I have a resource to refer people to for LDN, which is, you know, you feel so stuck sometimes not being able to prescribe. So I, I love that we can all work together. It's so great. No problem. It's always lots of fun working with you guys. All right. Well, have a lovely rest of your, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks. Bye everyone.